Here we're with Martin, Martin Fisher. Uh, Martin Fisher and his team, Charles and Mathieu. Mathieu. Yep. Uh, you guys have been working and designing this new wing. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Well, we tried to, to follow slightly new, a new path uh, in the development of this. So what we did is we used um, for this foil process that is based on automatic optimization. And so instead of playing around with the, with the shape or with the constraints of the shape, we impose constraints on, on the sailing conditions so, and on the structure. So sailing conditions that speed, required lift, things like that. And, and then the optimization produces the shape that fulfills all, all these constraints. It's a much more efficient process than playing empirically with geometric parameters. So instead of imposing geometric parameters, the geometric parameters are a res result of the optimization that is driven by imposed constraints on, as I said, sailing conditions and structure. And once you have the constraints, you have this looping yes. calculation to optimize the sections at each point. Yes, actually we do it in two steps. Uh, it's an iterative, iterative process. We first start with the first guess. Then based on this first guess, we determine for each area of the foil operating conditions. Then we optimize the 2D shapes along the span for, for these conditions. Then these uh, sections are used in a 3D optimization uh, loop to generate the, the 3D shape. And that changes, of course, the conditions. So then we review the conditions and do the whole thing again. And after a few iterations, that usually converges. And uh, that's how you get the sections in each one. Yeah, the sections and the 3D shape. 3D shape as well. So 3D shape, that, that means the outline, the, the plan form, but also the thickness distribution, twist distribution, camber, and so on. Um, how would you describe the performance characteristics of this foil? For this foil, we, we imposed uh, conditions for upward and downward sailing. So it's, it's not uh, optimized for, for maximum straight line speed or reaching or whatsoever. It's coming next up. Yeah, yeah, next. That's the next one. <laughs> now, this one was the goal was to 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 obtain a foil that represents a good compromise between upwind, downwind reaching, but clearly with a focus on upwind and downwind. Mm. The important thing was a lift over drag uh, to to maximize the lift over drag ratio because that translates directly in to upwind downwind up and downwind uh, performance. Yeah, you mentioned the reason why you have not too much of a sweep angle and this tape shape. Yeah, so, so we, we, we put a lot of emphasis, emphasis on the boundary layer characteristics. You know, around the foil there's a boundary layer and um, we think that conditions in the boundary layer are really important. And with short chord length, there's a risk of uh, separation. separation, laminar of separation, because the Reynolds number is really low. And to encourage transition, we have this sweep back a transition uh, trailing from edge. laminar to turbulence, yes. where and the turbulence would stick more to the yes, foil. Yes, it's more forgiving. Okay. And so we, we want to encourage the transition, and therefore we have this uh, swept back uh, tip. What was your estimates for the boundary layer thickness at the different points? At the, at the leading edge, it's of the order tenth of a millimeter, mm -hmm. whereas at the back of the foil, it's of the order millimeter. Mm -hmm. So it's quite thin. For the surface quality, for instance, that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, the, as long as roughness on the foil is well below the thickness of the boundary layer, the roughness doesn't affect the drag of the foil. So um, that's a very good one because we have a lot of discussions about yeah, yeah. surfaces. Yeah, yeah. and um, so as long as you stay significant with your roughness, mm -hmm. significantly below the boundary layer thickness. Significantly, yes. Yeah. Um, well, there are th um, I can dig out the, the papers on that, but um, there are different uh, measures of smoothness. But uh, it simply means that you must put more attention on the front part of the foil than on the back because it's thinner. Be thinner yeah, because it's so thin. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, because it's really thin, and every little um, error or default in that uh, zone uh, affects the drag. Whereas at the back, it's much less of a problem. What would you say was the estimate of the boundary thickness layer in the back? About a millimeter. A millimeter. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, you should pay attention everywhere, but at the front, 
it's, it's, it's much more important. important. Yeah. So if this is the, let's say, upwind, downwind, and also I think people are using this a lot for downwind subfoiling, mm -hmm. you know, when they're on the paddle going, mm -hmm. this is a really incredible foil. What would be the next wing that you could develop? Well, it's that's mainly up to you to tell us. <laughs> Speed, we want to go faster. <laughs> yeah, no, because you have you have the experience, you know what what kind of characteristics you're looking for, and then we can can try to to translate those or such a briefing into a shape, but it's really up to you I think to tell us and I really fully trust you that, that I think that yeah, that was the probably the most exciting light bulb moment I had because so we've been testing foils mostly um, empirically through trial and error over and over and over again. And so you get this really fine feel about what the foil does compared to, to what you changed. And then when I ch tried this for the first time, which has been optimized using your, your methods, mm. it's, it's this ratio of lift and drag that I've never felt before. That was really fascinating. Mm. And I think the combination, it, it, it was incredible. It was really <laughs> it's, incredible. It's of course, we, with, without your experience, we can't do anything. So it's, it's really important I to think get from you the, <coughs> uh, the, the feedback from, from the water. Well, first of all, the experience, what you're looking for, mm. such that you can tell us what, what you're looking for. And then we, I'm confident that we can translate that into a shape, mm. into a foil that does more or less at least what, what you hope to achieve. I think so. Yeah, and and I think by well, you have been working a lot on on manual yeah, uh, exactly. uh, uh, optimization. I think it, it's very very difficult to to get there. Of course, you you went a long way. It's just yeah, a lot of iteration. And lot yeah, of and it it takes a lot of time. And just to give you an idea, for these sections, typically for a single section, we are testing several thousand candidates. So if you do that. Manually, <laughs> oh, <that way laughs> <You won't. laughs> you'll be dead before. Exactly. So this <laughs> before is what, this is the, the exciting part because I feel like like for me who's been doing wing design a certain way, and then if we can bring in that type of optimization, I'm like, wow, this is going to be really something something exciting. I think it's really a, a new approach. So in there, there has to be a, a very steep uh, evolution curve uh, or development curve how to to or how to develop fast shapes. So in the old days, it was intuition. Let's say then computer programs helped with simulation. So you suddenly you could simulate something such that uh, you could at least check check it in in the computer before you build it, which can be which is quite costly to build it. I mean, but now we have a re has reached a stage where we can impose conditions that we want to to or situations that we want to achieve and then the optimization uh, does the the work that was before done by experienced people the the design approach i think has changed a lot it is now that you have to to think how to to define properly the optimization constraints and the optimization problem and then to get the shape out of that that's a, it's not easy but it's a purely it's, technical thing right that's really interesting. That's really good. Thank you, Martin. This is really amazing. Amazing, amazing wing. Hope we get some more trophies together as well yeah. on the windsurfing side. Well, yeah, the same here. Yeah, that's actually I think the, the this winter surfing part. It's really fascinating because there we have a very quick, rather turnaround. quick turnaround. Yeah, and so we can test things uh, because well, the, I'm very confident in our optimization, mm. but it's all based on theory mm. and you have to make assumptions and some of these assumptions might be wrong mm -hmm. but this is a way to, to validate and to validate the, and to mm. better understand what is going what's going on and if we find at some stage differences between what we predict and what's we happening on the water you. then we can re refine that mm. and uh, we can learn from that so it's um, it's a very interesting field I think and I, I can tell you I take it very very seriously together with Mathieu and, and Charles. I think one of these prototypes, probably all together, they cost maybe 5,000 euros a piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, a boat. It's not cheap. A boat is. That's more in the order of several millions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but of course not the foils, but yeah. to give you an idea, the uh, these big foils, they they cost off the order a million. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there you. And the turnaround time is much longer as well. Much longer. There we are talking about uh, six months to a year mm -hmm. for a turnaround, so that's much much slower. And you, you cannot 
test as much uh, and push the limits as far as you can do here. Okay. Well, that's it's going to be very exciting, that's for sure. So yeah, looking I forward so. to it. Yeah, know. same here, same here. What is the maximum theoretical speed we can do on a Windsor foil, you think? Oh, that I don't know. It, it is actually, it's something you choose because uh, the limit in the end is cavitation. So that's when, when the pressure on the low pressure side gets so low that water evaporates. And at that stage, you don't lose the lift, but the drag goes goes up very much, so it gets vertical. Mm -hmm. The drag curve um, gets vertical, so that's the limit. You, then you cannot, uh, it's very difficult to go much faster. And, but that speed, when it happens, you can choose to some extent. So you design your foils depending on the constraints you impose. And the tricky thing is that um, the higher the onset speed of cavitation is, the higher is the drag at low speed. Mm -hmm. also, so let's say if you have two foils, let's say one is designed to start cavitating at 35 knots and the other one at 40 knots, then the one that cavit starts cavitating at 40 knots will be slower from zero to 35 knots. And significantly slower? Uh, S measurable, uh, yeah. yeah. And the other one will be only quicker from 35 knots onwards. Mm -hmm. So it's a very difficult, a very tricky decision to take where you, where you put that um, onset speed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we should probably start working on a foil design specifically for 40 knots or 45 knots. Yes, yes. yes. So if you want, if you want to beat the, the speed record, yeah, then you design a foil for that. So it will be, it will be able to go beyond 40 knots, but it will be pretty poor uh, at lower speed. Yeah, let's call that concept 17. Yeah. Well, no, concept 18. <laughs> I mean, concept yeah. 18. Okay, thanks for that, Martin. <laughs>